praising the Lord in spite of. Just turn to your neighbor, look your neighbor in the eye. You ain't got to be too cool to do this. And if you can't look your neighbor in the eye, could be you said some things you ain't had no business saying. Go on, look your neighbor in the eye and say, neighbor, neighbor. happy Sabbath. Happy. The preacher's going to talk about praising the Lord in spite of. If I can get just a little bit more volume in the mics up here. This particular passage of pericope is tailored to teach us that God promises great blessings to his people, but many of these blessings require our act participation are y'all listening to me and David in this pericope tells us and shares with us exclusively how to praise God in spite of there are three points that just begs to be preached then I'll be in my seat the first thing I want to share with us as it relates to this text is David's determination. Let the church say David's determination. Ain't making it up, it's right there in verse one. Hope you ain't closed your Bibles. David says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Stop right there. When you look at this phrase, I will bless, that word bless in the original Hebrew is barak, which literally means to bend the knee. Is my mic on? It, 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 it means to kneel down. Uh, watch this. Notice I said for my first point, we're looking at David's determination. He don't say I might, but he says I will. Did y'all catch that? In other words, he is personally and for himself determined. It was Charles Spurgeon, that great preacher of London, England, that pastored the Metropolitan Church that preached to thousands of people without the aid of a microphone. Charles Spurgeon says that David is intelligent in his head and he's inflamed in his heart because he knows to whom all praises are due. In other words, David says, let everybody else do whatever they want to do. But for me, I'm going to bend my knees and give God praise. Okay, y'all still look quiet toward the back. Let me see if I can make another round. I guess I ought to ask the question, why is David so determined? Well, the answer is found in 1 Samuel after David killed Goliath. He moved up the social ladder. You will remember that King Saul had promised the man who slew Goliath that he would have riches and his daughter's hand in marriage. David goes from being a shepherd boy to being a celebrity overnight. And in 1 Samuel chapter 18, it says, And David was prospering in all of his ways, for the Lord was with him. Do I have a witness there? David is now a commander and officer in Samuel's army. David is very successful in battle, so much so, until the women wrote a hit song that topped the charts. 
that said that Saul has killed his thousands, but David has killed his ten thousands. Now, I don't know if it was the song or the women that sung the song. Whatever the case may be, it angered King Saul. Now Saul turns on David and he's trying to kill David. David now flees for his life. He's now a fugitive on the run. Watch this. Saul knows all of David's hiding spots. They're closing in on David. And David does the unthinkable. What does he do? I'm glad you asked. I was about to bust wide open. David crosses over into enemy territory. Without a doubt, here is a man who has killed their champion Goliath. And now he deliberately walks right into enemy territory territory as you would expect David is both seen and captured and brought before King Akish now what happens is David is so afraid until he disguises his sanity watch this now he begins to act like he's insane he's having conversations with people who are not there I wish I had some help in here. He's swatting at flies and insects that don't exist. He's foaming at the mouth. He acts like he's gone cuckoo for cocoa puffs. Do I have a witness in here? And so they bring him before the king. The king looks at David and says, y'all can turn him loose. He ain't going to bother nobody. They turn David loose. And now we find David hiding in a cave. Are y'all with me here? Now watch this. Saul is after David. He's crossed over into enemy territory. And now he's acting like he's lost his mind. When I was looking at this, this thought pierced my soul. And I want to help somebody in here and I want you to understand that sometimes in life, things will get worse before they get better. Is my mic on? Let me hit rewind and say it again. Sometimes in life, things will get worse before they get better. Let me show you what I'm talking about. David had a position and he lost it. He had a wife and he lost her. He had a wise counselor and he lost him. He had a friend and he lost him. He had self-respect and he lost it. David has hit what I like to call rock bottom. What will you do when the bottom falls out? Are y'all with me here? Here it is, here it is. In spite of what David is going through, even though he's by himself, it seems as if the world is against him, David turns around and says, I will bless. The Lord at all times. Now, let me say this. Your praise should not be contingent upon your problems. In other words, uh, 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 you, you shouldn't only praise God when things are fine. Can you praise him when hell breaks out in your home? Can you give him praise when your children are not acting right? Can you give God praise when you go to the doctor 
for a physical and he says that you have a terminal disease, can you still praise God? Are y'all in this house? Watch this now. David says, I will bless the Lord. When? I was just trying to see if y'all were paying attention. He says, I will bless the Lord at all times. That means in every situation. He says, I'm going to praise him before my trials. I'm going to praise him in every circumstance. I'm going to praise him in every situation. I'm going to praise him while I'm going through my trials. And I'm sure enough going to praise him after he brings me through my trials. David says, yes, I will bless the Lord. In bright days of glee and in dark nights of fear, David says, I will bless the Lord. Let me see if I can put it like this. Let me make another round. David is saying that I will never stop praising the Lord because I'll never be satisfied that he's done enough. Are y'all still with me here? Watch this. This is why David goes on to say that his praises shall continually be in my mouth. That word continuously means duration. Okay, I didn't get some of y'all on that one. Let me see if I can give you another one. It means extension. Okay, still ain't got some of y'all. Uh, it means perpetually daily. Okay, I ain't get some. Maybe I ain't got to your words yet. Uh, let me see if I can make another round. It means morning, noon, and night. <laughs> David says all day, every day, I'm going to praise him. Do I have a witness here? Is that all? Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Secondly, unless I hold you too long, if we're going to praise the Lord in spite of, not only must there be determination, but we see, secondly, David's exaltation. I ain't making it up. It's, it's in verse number two. It's right there in verse number two. He says, my soul shall make her boast to who? In the Lord. Watch this. He says, when I start bragging on God, he says, the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Do you see that right there? Well, let me see if I can unpack it. The exaltation of this verse is not mere tongue bragging. Watch this, watch this, watch this. The soul is in it. Okay, I didn't get you. Let me see if I can make another round. The boasting is meant and felt before it's expressed. Okay. Let me see if I can make another round. H have you ever seen people before they could express verbally you could tell emotionally what was going on because of what was burning on the inside. Okay, I still ain't got some of y'all. Let me... Sometimes, when we begin to think about what the Lord has done, 
been in church a long time. I've seen some begin to rock. I've seen people wave their hands. Am I right about it? And before they can express verbally what they feel on the inside, they have already expressed to a degree how they feel about what God is already doing. Do I have a witness here? And sometimes I can. I could be driving down the road and begin to think about the Lord and my hand just, anybody ever been there before? You just start waving your hand while you're driving. And sometimes folk be pumping, hey, I ain't waving at them. Y'all show sure acting funny. I'm getting my praise on because I know what God has done for me. Is there anybody here know for yourself what the Lord has done for you? Anybody in here know that God has made a way for you? Yeah. He says, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Uh, I, I pastored uh, for about four four and a half years in Memphis, Tennessee. I had the privilege of following a legend uh, when it comes to civil rights, Dr. Benjamin Hooks, uh, who was the former president of the National NAACP for over 30 years, who was appointed by President Nixon to be over the FCC, who became the first black judge appointed to a bench who has worked with every sitting president of the United States since President Nixon and who was also one of the behind the scenes people for bringing King to Memphis for the march, who was a civil rights lawyer by trade. He pastored the Greater Middle Baptist Church for 56 years and uh, in that church had a judge who was appointed by two sitting presidents of the United States. I was in a meeting with her. She was appointed by President Clinton over the courts of appeals. And then she was, pre she was uh, appointed by President Obama to be a federal judge who also made his list to choose to replace uh, the Supreme Court judge that had died on, in uh, Obama's last term. We were sitting and talking in a meeting, and we were talking about the community and things that we could do to make Memphis a better place. And she cut me off, Pastor Cox, in the middle of my sentence. Now, granted, she is a judge, but we wasn't in court. And she didn't have no business cutting her pastor off while he was talking in the middle of his sentence. But while I was talking, she said, Pastor! I said, yes. She said, I just got to tell you this. I said, what is it? She says, I've got to tell you that God has sure been good to me. Some of y'all will catch it on your way home. Where are you going with this? I'm glad you asked. There ought to be some times and moments in your life where you ought to interrupt the program. And tell somebody, I can't help myself. I've just got to tell you, baby, how good God has been to me. Do I have any help in here? You ought to be able to brag on God. Is my mic on? 
Let me hit rewind and say it again. You ought to be able to brag on God. I'm going to say it one more time. You ought to be able to brag on God. Has he done anything for you? Well, you ought to brag on him. Well, if you can't think of nothing, let me tell you, you can brag on God's person. You can brag on his presence. You can brag on his promises. You can brag on his attributes. You can brag on his works. Do I have a witness in here? And you've got to understand that life isn't a quandary across the enigmatic waves of life. If God watches every falling sparrow, surely God watches over you. Do I have a witness in here? The converted person boasts in the Lord and not their own character or achievements. When we understand the gospel of grace, we realize that we did all the sinning and Christ did all the saving. Do I have a witness there? So our boast should always be in the law. Watch what else he says, and I must hear it. He says, the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. By this, the most lowly person are consoled and encouraged by the testimonies of others. We ought to talk about the Lord's goodness on purpose so that others may trust faithfully in the Lord. Watch this, David says that the humble shall hear thereof, both of my deliverance and of my thanksgiving, and will be glad that a good man has so much favor shown to him by a good God. Do I have a witness there? Watch this now, and I'm through. David praised God while going through. But watch this. David makes a vow to God and says to him, in essence, God, just as soon as you get me out of here, I'm going to tell it. Testing one, two. Let me hit rewind and say it again. He's praising God while he's going through. But he makes a vow that when you get me out of here, I'm going to tell it. Which brings me to my last point. I've tried to just two things so far. David's determination, his exaltation. But then since David makes this vow that as soon as he gets out, that leads us to number three, David's invitation. I ain't making it up. It's right there in verse number three. If you ain't scratched it out your Bible, it's there. Oh, magnify. The Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Do you see that there? You see, the resolution to praise God continually is the basis for seeking others to magnify and exalt the Lord together. This invitation is directed to uh, those who are humble and teachable. Do y'all have a, do, do y'all understand what I'm saying? You see, the well-saved soul isn't content to enjoy their redemption and blessings in isolation. Do I have a witness there? You, you, you have to understand that the subjects are so superlative that they call on all their brothers and sisters to magnify the Lord with them and exalt his name 
collectively. Amen. Uh, I don't know what folk think they come to church for. Because I, I've been preaching about how we ought to be praising the Lord. And some of y'all ain't said nothing yet. We come to church to worship God and to give him thanks for what he's done. Now, I hate to have to say this, but some of us are in the rear on our praise. You mean to tell me that you'll get excited about a, a basketball game where they bouncing a pig skid up and down a court and throwing it in a hoop and you'll come to church and sit down and shut your mouth? You mean to tell me that you will decorate your car and wear a cow, a Dallas Cowboy t-shirt and jump up and down and invite folks to your house to watch the game and won't invite folks to church to come and praise God? I dare you to sit down on the God who woke you up this morning. I dare you to sit down on the God who has blessed you over and above what we really deserve. David says, we've got to do this together. Are y'all in here? Okay, let me put it like this. God's praises sound best in concert. When you get to making some noise over here and making some noise over there and making some noise up, I see y'all up there and making some noise up there. It sounds good when it's together. I wish I had some help in here. And if you ain't got but two teeth, they look better together. story was told about a man, Pastor Cox, who lived next door to the church. But they never could get him over there for service. But one day, the church caught on fire. And they called the pastor and said, you, you ought to want to get down here. Because the church is on fire. And when he got down to the church, the first man that he saw standing on the church property was the man that lived next door that they never could get to come to church. They told him, they said, well, pastor, the fire department was able to get here as quickly as they could because the man next door called and he's standing right there. Now, the pastor, of course, is saddened that the church is on fire. But his curiosity got the best of him. He could not stand it no longer. So he goes over to the man and says, sir, I appreciate you calling the fire department. He says, but we've been trying to get you to come to church for a long time, and here you are now at the church. He says, well, the reason I'm, I'm over here is because your church ain't never been on fire before. And 
And all I'm trying to say is when we begin to praise God together, the church ought to catch on fire. I'm through. I'm through. I'm through. I'm through. David tells us why he wants us to join in concert as it relates to praising God. David tells us in verse number four, David says, I sought the Lord and he heard my cry and he delivered me from all of my fears. David goes on to say in verse number six that uh, this poor man uh, crying and the Lord uh, heard him and uh, saved him uh, out of all his troubles. And I hear David say in verse number seven that the angel of the Lord encamped around about them that fear him and deliver them. This is why David goes on in verse number eight. And said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Do I have a witness in here? And uh, this is why he goes on in verse 8 and says, oh, taste uh, and see that the Lord is good. Ooh, David said uh, that everybody in here ought to be able to experience uh, the goodness of God. Have I got a witness? And when you trust in the Lord, you will experience the goodness of God. Yeah. Is there anybody here know for yourself that God has been good to you? Don't fool me. Is there anybody here know for yourself had it not been for the Lord who was on your side? Tell me, where would you be? I'm out of here. May the Lord bless you real good. But can I bother you just one time? Can you grab your neighbor? by the hand uh, shake your neighbor hand uh, like you're gonna shake it off uh, and look at your neighbor uh, in the eye uh, and say neighbor I got one thing I want to tell you uh, say neighbor weeping uh, may endure for a night uh, but joy in the morning oh I feel all right here I didn't mean to go this far but my soul done got happy every time I think about how good God's been to me every time I think about how he's made a way out of nowhere oh every time i think about him how he's opened door that's been closed in my face i just gotta lift my hand and tell the lord thank you for making a way can i ask you one question ain't he all right i said ain't he all right do you know him? Have you tried him? Won't he make a way? Say 